Glory to Jesus Christ. So we're... Turn this a little. Uh, so we're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We're at number 150 through 152 in part one, the profession of faith. And that's chapter three, man's response to God. Article one, I believe. So uh, Roman numeral two, I know whom I have believed. And it's page 40 of the second edition. So this is, I'm using the second edition of the Catechism of the Catholic Church published by Libreria Eritrice Vaticana. That's the Vatican publishing house and bookstore. And, uh, and it was uh, 19, oh, two, yeah. The original is 1996, I think. And the, uh, the first, the first edition, the second edition is 2016. And this is the 2019 reprint. So page 40. I know whom I have believed, to believe in God alone. Faith is first of all a personal adherence of man to God. At the same time, and inseparably, it is a free assent to the whole truth that God has revealed. As personal adherence to God and assent to his truth, Christian faith differs from our faith in any human person. It is right and just to entrust oneself wholly to God and to believe absolutely what he says. It would be futile and false to place such faith in a creature because only God is absolute, only God is ultimate, only God is eternal, only God is infinite. So, and the, the scriptural citations, Jeremiah 17, five through six, Psalm 45, and Psalm 146, three and four. So free assent to the whole truth that God has revealed. So we trust God so that we, as, as the, we're willing to throw ourselves into his arms into, uh, and, and, and trust him and all that. Because there's nobody else in the end. Everybody else has, uh, has real limitations. Only God has no limitations. Everybody else that in, uh, here in the mortal world, anyway, is uh, has to deal with his or her flaws and everybody else's flaws. So God is the one that we trust absolutely. So when something else or someone else, however good that someone is, their nation, their group, ethnicity, family, uh, you name it, they, they're all good. But uh, if they take the place of God, then they uh, mutate into monsters. Sometimes it's a slow mutation, sometimes it's very quick. And of course, if you have a false concept of God, uh, either uh, murderously wicked, uh, uh, of course, people, they wouldn't admit that uh, until you see see that, or a totally, uh, utterly permissive in that you know, anything goes, which ultimately turns into wickedness also. So a more passive wickedness than the more direct type. So to have the, the, a true concept of God, a, a true adherence to God, who is love, including tough love, and... Uh, and asking to be filled with that. As a personal difference to adherence to God and assent to his truth, Christian faith differs from our faith in any human person. It is right and just to entrust oneself wholly to God and to believe absolutely what he says, because we have to interpret that rightly. Because some people take something, you know, let's say, uh, the book of Joshua, for instance, and go uh, 
have a, a superficial uh, literalist interpretation of that a divorced from Christ or divorced even from divorced even from the the Talmud uh, and uh, the uh, and uh, a, a fuller mosaic tradition uh, and uh, to excuse all sorts of atrocities and uh, we just have to look at the uh, the history of uh, the relation of church and state in Europe to see how murderous it can be, even if you have all the right, all the right doctrines, if you, you can pervert that concept of God, so that all the right doctrines mean nothing. So this is page 41. To believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 151. For a Christian, believing in God cannot be separated from believing in the one he sent, his beloved Son in whom the Father is well pleased. God tells us to listen to him. Mark 1, 11, and see Mark 9, 7. So at the baptism, that's what the Lord says. This is my beloved son, listen to him. So uh, God the Father, that is. Believing in God cannot be separated from believing in the one he sent. That's the Christian, the whole Christian approach. The Lord himself said to his disciples, believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. We can believe in Jesus Christ because he himself is God. The word made flesh. Quote, no one has ever seen God, the only son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. John 1, 18. Because he has seen the Father, no one has ever seen God. We can believe in Jesus Christ because he is himself God, the Word made flesh. Quote, no one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. Because God, God's spirit, of course. So it's not, you can't see God until the incarnation. So you might say, but what about the the appearances of God in the Old Testament. Well, I would agree with those who say that that was the risen Christ that uh, appeared to them. Because Christ, you know, even though he wouldn't uh, exist in time as uh, it is human nature until hundreds or thousands of years later, um, He's transcendent, he's risen from the dead, he's not restricted by time and space the way we are in our mortality. So he's, uh, you know, he's restricted by the human nature, in one sense, but it's a resurrected human nature that he has. So the, the restrictions of that are, uh, are nothing compared to the restrictions of mortality. And of course, he's the, the God incarnate, he's, he's God the eternal word, so the two natures are distinct, but Jesus Christ is one person. The Lord himself said to his disciples, believe in God, believe also in me. So that's, believe in God the Father, that is. But what does he say before that? Let not your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. And it's God the Father, you have faith in God the Son, and in particular God the Son incarnate. Because the Holy Spirit would also be included, but the Holy Spirit isn't mentioned there. 
We can believe in Jesus Christ because he is himself God, the word made flesh. Quote, no one has ever seen God, the only son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. Because he has seen the Father, so this is, you know, uh, again, the analogy, the human analogy, when we're talking about God, God, uh, the eternal word in eternity, with God, the Father, and eternity, the Holy Spirit. But uh, in his... Uh, in his humanity, he has totally experienced the Father also here in, the, in his resurrection. Because he has seen the Father, Jesus Christ is the only one who knows him and can reveal him. John 6, 46, and see Matthew eleven twenty seven. To believe in the Holy Spirit, to have faith in, in the Holy Spirit. 152. One cannot believe in Jesus Christ without sharing in his spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals to men who Jesus is. For, quote, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Who searches everything, even the depths of God. No one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So that's the, the unity of, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one being, but distinct in their persons, uh, not separated. We find this hard to, to grasp, of distinction without separation. Because <laughs> we as people, and remember, person here doesn't mean people person here is in, in, in the infinite and eternal person is just a profoundly different from from us as people yet we in soul are the image of God only God knows God completely we believe in the Holy Spirit which is italicized because he is God the church never ceases to proclaim the faith in one only God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So then we have that. Here we are. Here we are. So let's pray. Oh, I didn't pray our prayer at the beginning. Well, let's just pray the Our Father then. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.